Now, for the most part, the properties uh, that we're going to be looking at are going to be residential. But again, you could be working uh, commercial properties, industrial properties, agricultural property, businesses. So these are all the different types of properties. But for the most part, what the course is going to concentrate on and what the state exam is going to be concentrating on is going to be residential properties, residential. So we have commercial and then we have residential properties. And in Spanish, we call it residencial, comercial, industrial. All right. So the other thing uh, with these courses, too, my recommendation is to try to pick up some Spanish words because there's a huge market out there where you could be working uh, these properties. Uh, here we're offering this course from Miami, and we have a huge uh, Spanish-speaking population here in Florida. Uh, that again, you have South Americans coming down here. We have people from Spain coming down here buying properties. So there's a tremendous opportunity for you to be making money. And again, if you're you have just a, a concept of additional languages or a different a different uh, words in your vocabulary, uh, that can help you out. Uh, again, closing the deal. So anything that can get you closer to closing the deal that's what you're looking for also. So again, you don't have to be focusing just on $200,000 properties or $400,000. Maybe you could be looking at a $5 million, $10 million mansion uh, and working with clients like that that are looking to buy those types of properties. <clears throat> okay, so again, residential property. Again, four or less homes. Uh, the definition of residential is a pro is four or less homes. Uh, it's a vacant lot where you can build four or, or more properties on it. Uh, it's also uh, agricultural property of 10 or less acres. Okay, so that's pretty much the definition of the uh, residential properties. In case of four or less homes, a vacant lot where you can build four or less houses on there, an agricultural property of 10 or less acres. And one acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. Okay, and one way to remember this number, again, they're going to uh, ask you a question uh, where you might have to do a math problem related to this. So one way to remember is, uh, 4 and 3 equals 7, and 5 and 6 equal 11. So 7 and 11 uh, to help you as a memory jogger uh, to remember that number. So 1 acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. Now for the most part, when we have property, we're going to have all the bundle of rights. And these rights are transferred, what's called voluntary alienation. Voluntary alienation. It's a voluntary transfer. And these are called the instruments of conveyance, the instrument to transfer the bundle of rights. And it can be done with a deed or with a will. So voluntary alienation is done through a deed or with a will. Involuntary alienation, involuntary transfer, can be done through probate, as cheat, eminent domain, or adverse possession. Let's take a look at probate. Now probate, if the person um, dies, without a will, then it's going to go through a probate process where the court is going to determine which one of these heirs is going to get what portion of the property. So that's called a probate process. Now when the person number two dies without a will and without heirs, then it's called as cheat to where the state is going to confiscate the property. Okay, so that's called as cheat. So the property is going to return back. It's going to go to the state if there were no, uh, if there was no will, uh, if there were no heirs. Okay. So again, the property is cheats to the state. Number three, eminent domain. Eminent domain, for example, is where they're going to take private property for public use. So eminent domain is they're taking private property for public use. For example, uh, your home right now. Uh, they're gonna in where you're living let's say for instance in this example they're gonna go ahead and construct a roadway well the government is going to go ahead and use eminent domain to take over that property to construct that roadway that highway now number four condemnation by eminent domain is the process whereby they pay you what they believe is the amount of your what what your property is worth so that's called condemnation by eminent domain and number five adverse adverse possession Adverse possession is if somebody takes over your property without your um, permission. So it's called adverse possession. Okay, so adverse possession is a hostile possession. It's open possession. Uh, the person pays the taxes. They put a claim on the title. And if they've lived there for seven years, technically they can keep the property. Okay, so it's called adverse possession. It's a flagrant possession of the property. So it's hostile. It's open uh, the person pays the taxes, they put a claim on the title, and if they live there seven or more years, technically they can 
uh, keep the property. Okay, so that's called adverse possession. Again, for the most part, uh, we've looked at voluntary uh, alienation. We looked at involuntary alienation. For the most part, we're going to do everything voluntarily. So when we sell a property, we're going to do it through a deed, which is called the instrument of conveyance. The instrument of conveyance is a document that conveys title. It transfers title. <clears throat> okay, and again, we're going to learn all this terminology. So again, we... Uh, looked at the uh, uh, grantor, okay, the grantee, and again, these terminology, all these wording, if it ends in the letter O-R, it's the one that gives, the giver, and if it ends in the word, in the letter double E, it's the one that receives, the receiver, so the giver and the receiver, okay, so let's take a look at how these, some of this terminology works out, so here we have the deed, and in Spanish we call it la escritura, escritura, and it's the instrument of conveyance, <clears throat> it's the instrument of conveyance, and the parties to the deed is the grantor and the grantee. The grantor is the one that gives. The grantee is the one that receives. Okay, the grantor is going to give title to the property. So the grantor gives title to the property. And the grantee, the buyer, receives title to the property. Okay, so the grantor is the seller. The grantee is the buyer. The seller, the FISBO, the for sale by owner, the owner of this property, is going to give title through the deed. And what is title? It's a bundle of rights, it's a right of disposition, use, possession, and exclusion. And here in, uh, here in Florida and in certain other states also, uh, it's called lien theory state. Lien theory state is where the buyer, the borrower, the grantee holds on to the title. So in lien theory state, the buyer has the title. Okay, so there we go. We have lien theory state and title theory state. Okay, so in lien theory state, the grantee, the buyer, the mortgagor, has the title to the property. Whereas in number two, the title theory state, the mortgagee, okay, what's the mortgagee? Again, we have to learn some of this terminology. Okay, the lender has title to the property. Okay, so the bank, the lender, the mortgagee. Okay, but in Florida, it's a lien theory state where the buyer, the mortgagor, has title to the property. So again, we're learning all this uh, new terminology, okay? And again, the grantee, the mortgagor, the buyer. But again, you're not going to see the buyer in the, in the state exam. They're going to give you words to uh, trip you, to confuse you. So you have to become very familiar uh, with who's the mortgagor, who's the mortgagee, who's the grantor, who's the grantee. And again, it's just practice and re repetition, and it'll help you uh, to memorize all this terminology, too. <clears throat> okay, the deed is going to be recorded, and the purpose of, of recording is to give what's called constructive notice. Constructive notice. It's a public record uh, that we're making, okay? Uh, actual notice, it's an informal notice, and uh, before, uh, let's say in the 1800s, where they didn't have any courts, uh, and people lived out in the mountains, they would uh, let's say for instance you had a buyer and a seller okay the buyer had horses and he wanted to trade the horses for this ranch and they would get together the buyer and the seller and unite all the townspeople gather all the townspeople so the townspeople could serve as witnesses for this transaction okay so that was called actual notice now we don't call up all the townspeople anymore what we do number one is we go to public record and we create a constructive notice by recording the deed. So now we let everybody know, all the townspeople know, electronically through the computers, okay, that now there's a new owner of this property and that's called constructive notice. <clears throat>